would you like to make a summoning stone for your Call of Cthulhu RPG that is both realistic and awesome? Then keep watching. It's Michelle, your miniature misfit, and today we're going to craft ourselves our very own Call of Cthulhu Summoning Stone from rubbish! Hooray! First of all, you'll need some thin cardboard. Anything will do. I'm using a cat food box. Why not? Please leave a comment below if you've used a cat food box to make a craft. Just type in meow. We'll need a 3 by 3 square, so take your time, use a knife, take it steady. We're going to need a few of these, so make sure you have enough cardboard to make at least four of them. Using the first as a template, just cut some more out. Gluing them together is a little bit of a science. So what you need to do is look for the corrugation and when you put them together, make sure the corrugation is opposite. So if the base one is horizontal, the next one will be a vertical. This will give it extra strength and make it very solid. Now it's time for the hot glue gun. Give it a firm press, make sure it's nicely squished all together. Just check for edge strength. Now you'll need to draw out your stone shape. You'll be using a knife to cut this, so an outline is a good idea. If you're unsure of what it should look like, or you're a little unconfident, that's okay. Just pop on Google and get yourself an image. Take care with the knife. Again, you're cutting through four layers of cardboard and there's hot glue in the middle of this. It's going to be difficult. Take your time. Cut away from you. There, That way, if the knife slips, you're not going to hurt yourself. There we are. Nicely cut out. Nicely thick. Kind of looks like a stone. I'm going to chip away using the knife, again cutting it away from myself, so to make it look more like a rough sort of stone. As I was doing this, this piece of cardboard started to look like slate to me, so I decided to go with that kind of idea. Time for the gesso. This is a brush on primer. It's a very good primer. I would highly recommend getting some gesso if you can. Uh, paint goes on it really well. It is, it is designed for acrylic paints. So we're just going to brush this all over. It will make it a uniform colour. It will also make it really strong and it will protect the cardboard to a degree from any kind of wet damage from when we do paint it. We will be priming again later but this step is quite important, so make sure you don't miss this one. After it's dry, you'll take some more cardboard, just a bit of scrap, and we're going to build the stone up with some more layers. Just rough up the edges and dry fit them first and then glue them down with some hot glue after just to build up the 3D nature once that's all hardened up and dried you'll be covering it again in another layer of primer you could use a spray primer if you wanted to Mm -hmm. 
And there are the measurements if you wish to copy me completely. More primer. You can never have enough primer. <laughs> it's not looking like much, but it'll look good in a min, I promise. Keep watching and it does get better, okay? <laughs> So I'm just evening out the bottom. If you don't have a pair of fancy scissors like I've got, you don't need them. Uh, I just have them left over from a Christmas present a long time ago. Like, I, like you can tell, you can use a knife if you want to. It's fine. Just take it steady. Now we're going to draw Cthulhu. I have drawn this freehand. If you are not confident in doing this or you think your drawing skills suck or whatever, it's okay if you want to pop onto Google and find yourself an image to print off. No one's going to stop you. That's absolutely fine. I can freehand. If you can't, don't worry. That's what Google's for. Okay, if you'd like to copy mine, just take a screenshot. Now onto the modelling putty. I've used Milliput because, well, that's kind of what I had anyway. Um, but you could use green stuff or anything you like. Just remember to knead it thoroughly and follow the instructions to the letter on the back of the packet. If you don't, then you're going to have a bad time. And no one wants a bad time! So follow the directions and everyone will be super happy. Right, so now the milliput is sticky and it will stick to the cardboard. You don't need to use anything extra like super glue or anything like that. It is very strong. And using the gesso, the gesso has like a tooth to it, like a, almost like a texture, which the milliput will grip to really, really well. So use the gesso and the milliput will stick like crazy. You won't need glue, I promise. So just roll some strands out for his tentacles. They don't need to be perfect. This is going to be a, quote, stone carving. So it's up to you how rough or how smooth you want it. It's fine. Your cultists, how good a stone worker were they? <laughs> yeah, just take your time on this. You've got a five hour working time with Milliput. The warmer it is, the less time you have, but it's roughly about five hours, so you can take your time. So use whatever you have. I have a pencil and that's what I'm using. If you have a cocktail stick, use a cocktail stick. If you have nothing, use your finger. If you don't have a finger, use your nose. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Just anything can be a tool. Also, Milliput works really well with water. So use the water, it will smooth it. Instead of buying expensive, fancy rubber tools, why not make your own? Get cheap pencils and cut them up with scissors and craft knives. Works just as well. And then later on, if you really want to, yeah, fork out, get some good ones, but you don't need them. Just work the putty into the edge. This is supposed to be a stone carving, so it needs to look like it's been carved out of the rock. And also pushing the edges into the cardboard like this also makes it extremely strong, gives it extra grabability, I suppose, darling. So yeah, take your time again, work around. I'm using the end of a paintbrush, as you can tell, uh, just to make some eyes and adding a few extra bits where I messed up and you didn't see that, shush. Uh, so there we go. I have to texturise in with a little bit of uh, tin foil and I think a stone. I just threw a stone at it and yay. 
Now to make the base, just measure yourself out something that's about a third larger than the actual stone. Uh, I can't remember, I think it was about four inches by two, in no, two inches? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, just eyeball it. You might want a circular one, you might not. So use hot glue. Don't use super glue, don't use PVA, use hot glue for this. If your base isn't exactly flush, the hot glue will fill in the little ripples and the edges and make it very, very secure. You've also got an added bonus of the hot glue flowing into the corrugation of the cardboard, which makes for a really, really, really strong bond. As you can see, I hadn't cut it level and the hot glue saved my ass. So yay, hot glue, woo. I do have spackle, but I'm showing you how to make your own using talcum powder and PVA glue. It's not ideal, but I will show you, it does actually work really well. The only downside I found from this is that it does dry slowly and also it will crack so just bear that in mind when you do use it but as you can see it goes on really well and you can get some very interesting textures from it i'm going to cover the whole base and just rough it up as i go to kind of give it a rocky beach stony sand type texture it's not smooth and it's not rough so a rocky beach sand thing you know what i mean it's fine <laughs> so we just need to leave it to dry it'll take probably about 12 hours i left it overnight in a warm place and as you can see it cracked but that's part and parcel if you do have spackle or filler or whatever you want to call it polyfiller you can use that too that's absolutely fine it does shrink when it dries but it doesn't tend to crack as much also, it's a bit more dusty. So I'm just going round. I'm filling in this tiny corrugation pieces. And now we're going to cover the bottom with some glue. Just straight PVA. And we're going to add some stones. I'll do a video on how to get this at some point. So keep an eye out for that. Let me know below if you've used sand to get stones before. As you're putting this down, think about your cultists. Think about how they may worship Cthulhu at this summoning stone and how the landscape may have weathered over time as they've walked up to it. Cover the whole thing in a solution of 50% glue, 50% water mixed up. That will make it rock solid. I've just taken some dry sand, my paintbrush, and as you can see, I'm just adding more texture to the rock. I'm thinking seaside, so this sand is going to look like the rock's possibly been underwater a few times and it's got some sand in its cracks. That's the worst part about going to the seaside. Anyway, covering it in black gesso this time. There you go. Front and back. There we are. Covered completely in black gesso. This at this point is solid. I'm using a blue grey it's a slate color really and i'm covering at about 90 percent coverage just using a sponge to make sure i keep the texture and don't go too deep into the pockets the next color i'm using is like a torpy brown almost a fawn color but not as light again just dry brushy sponging it type of thing uh thinking zenithal highlight so all the surfaces that are pointing upwards are getting a dab of this. Okay, it's kind of looking cool now, we're getting there. Definitely got a seaside vibe going on. Yeah, it's going to be pretty good by the time we finished. All right, so some highlights. Uh, just using sort of a light, very, very light sort of bone color. And it's it's probably 20% coverage just with the sponge. Again, zenithal, so all of the surfaces that are pointing up, that's what's getting hit by the sponge. Don't forget your terrain around the side as well. It's made of the same stone as your monolith. It's a 
you know, give it a bit of love too. Next, dry brushing. Now this is a makeup brush and they are very, very good for dry brushing. Um, and there you go, dry brushing. It's not rocket science, people. It's just, you know, dry brushing. I'm just using that light colour again to dry brush over what I've already used the sponge for. This, what am I just going to say here? Just use a dry brush, you know, choose, choose a colour and dry brush it, it's fine. Crack on. <laughs> Ta-da! That is looking amazing. I love dry brushing, it looks so cool. Look how cool that looks. It's starting to really look like stone. It's really good. And it's and it does look a lot like slate, so that thin cardboard trick, really cool. So I'm gonna take I've got a dark green, a mid green, and a yellow. I'm gonna take the darkest green first and using a crappy brush, sort of push the paint into the crevices of the sand and you may see me twitching because I was really bad that day um, so I apologize if it goes really blurry but yeah again like we painted the stone take the dark green put a base coat of dark green on medium green about 80 70 to 80 percent coverage over the dark green try not to get it in the crevices and then we'll go on to the yellow for the highlights. Now you might need to do a couple of coats with yellow. Uh, just eyeball it, let it dry, see what happens, add some more. With my particular yellow, it's a very cheap craft paint. I had to do three coats just to kind of get some highlights. Now, as you can see on the stones, I'm putting a little bit of green and mid green just up the stones because I was thinking algae. Okay, take a look on Google for some pictures of algae and copy how that works on stone and you'll get something like this. The trick is basically just to put some dark green and then light green and we don't go yellow on that. Algae is quite a matte colour on stones. Dun dun! Cthulhu is coming! So we've got a little offering plate. That I didn't video because I was an idiot. Um, that was a sequin and the little things inside are just some dried quinoa. I'm using one of my favourite blacks. It's by Golden. It's kind of shiny but it's so dark. It's amazing. And I'm just painting the little offering plate. It was a, it was an idea. I saw a sequin on my desk. I thought, oh, that'd be cool. So yeah, just use a sequin. If you don't have one, you don't have to add it. My black wash, I think I showed you in video two. Um, everything just gets covered in black. Yeah, just cover it in a nice black wash. Let it dry thoroughly. So if you want to leave it overnight, even better. But let it dry thoroughly. I want to make things glossy. I figured the offering plate might have some sort of meat in there, which would be kind of rotting, perhaps. So cover things with gloss and now I'm dry brushing again and this is actually white but it's a very light dry brush and it's just to add some dust using the gloss medium I'm making the stones look wet and kind of slimy just yourself put it where you think it needs to go now for the eyes Cthulhu tends to be double pupiled so I needed two eyes in each socket using super glue which is amazing I have some tiny tiny little gems for nail art as you could probably tell I don't do anything with my nails so these things are fantastic you can pick them up really cheap at the dollar store or the pound shop wherever you are you can pick these up and they're great and they're super effective using a uh, black here I've wet it down so it's almost an ink texture and I'm just putting some weathering and that's easy enough to do just wet it down make it very 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 light and draw the brush from where you think water would drip so it would just come down and the water would leave dirty marks as it goes down the stone and after it's all dry there we have it the final 
summoning stone for tabletop. This thing is solid as a rock. I've dropped it so many times. Please let me know in the comments below if you got to the end of this video, because this is a long one. So good for you. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Michelle, Miniature Misfit. Please subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this, please thumbs up the video. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, take care. Keep crafting.